to microphone number five. So we're just going to try another one out, see how it goes, you know, always striving for better. <sighs> All right, so I'm in the mood to make another top, and I'm wearing that linen top, you know, with the crazy pattern. And actually, I am going to be reworking this pattern probably after this project. I'll make a video strategizing how I would remake this pattern so that it looks the same, but it's not as much of a headache. But anyway, putting that aside, this is today's blouse. It's going to be this one right here. Okay. It is a butter egg pattern. It's got these like tulipy, uh, tulip shaped sleeves that are like open. It's like a two piece sleeve, but, um, there's two different front openings, fronts, sorry, fronts. One is a round neck that's just solid. And the other one is a V neck that has like a big pleat type thing in the front. And I'm actually going to be doing this bodice with these sleeves. And I'm doing that bodice because um, it looks like it'll give a little extra flare. And this blouse comes way down over your hips. And the last thing I want is a blouse that's coming over my hips that might be a little bit tight. I'd rather have a little extra flare in there. You know what I mean? So anyhow, the fabric that I'm going to be using, it's, it's a polyester, but it looks kind of like a crinkly silk. Um, you know, it's just something a little bit flowy. It's uh, fun. It's fun. Um, it has this selvage that... I've been thinking about the suit that I'm going to be making and I'm going to be using a selvage for trim there. And I was looking at this selvage and I might be using that fringy selvage to trim out the edge of the sleeves. I don't know yet. I'll see when I get there, but that might be fun. So let's get started cutting it out. So like I have said before, I tend to over pen, you know, especially on something like this, which is kind of a silky fabric. But to me, it just makes more sense to be secure that your pattern is going to stay where it's supposed to even after I have it cut out so that that way it's easier to come back and make all of my markings and not have to replace everything. And um, also, I don't necessarily go exactly by the pattern layout on the envelope. I look at it and see what their strategy is. And then I make my best choice because individual pattern fabrics um, are different widths and depending on the size you cut out they're different shapes so sometimes you can just you know come up with your own best plan but all right so I'm reading the instructions amazingly and the first step because I'm doing this view CD and actually it's the same for both views uh, what they want you to do is on the front between the very top and this notch to ease it, to put in ease stitching, which is basically like gathering stitching or I would do my finger crimping thing. But just out of curiosity, I laid it over and we're only talking about maybe a quarter of an inch difference here. So I'm just, I'm gonna skip ease stitching it because when I pin these together up here and here, when I'm sewing it, if I put this side down next to my feed dogs, I can ease in a quarter of an inch. Easy. Easy, easy. Haha. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to skip that step, you know, just letting you know. If it was more than that, I probably would, but a quarter inch on a straight is very, very simple to ease in while you're sewing it. So I'm skipping that step. 
but coming up here where I have to make a pleat. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually get started marking up my pattern because there's a lot of things to mark on there. Okay, so we have circles for sleeve placement. I've got circles for pleat folding and facing placement. I've got squares to match and I've got another one over here to mark the center. So what I use, is got my little scrap of leather, my little hole punch, and I'm just punching straight through all of these. So I can just punch those, come back with my blue heat erasable pen today, and just mark it in like that. And then when I iron it, my little pen markings will disappear. So I'm going to finish marking all of these up real quick. I've got my center front pin together because I've got to make my pleat here. And I've got a dot up here, which is basically where the seam allowance is going to come. That's where that stitch this way is. Um, and another dot here. And I need to carry it through all the way to the bottom. So if I line this up here, all right, I can see that it's two and a half inches in. So I'm going to go ahead and place my little ruler all the way down. Now I am stitching it here between these two dots. Everything below that I am basting. So I'm just going to put a couple little dashes, which is my key to myself not to change my stitch length to a uh, basting stitch down here. So I'm going to go to my sewing machine, put a brand new size 9 needle in here because I don't want this stuff to snag. Try to find some thread that's going to match and I will stitch this and baste this. Alright, so I have it sewn and the first thing I'm going to do is press it flat. I'm just going to do a couple things. Oh, just ignore that. My iron is spitting. It'll dry out. <sighs> okay, anyway, it's going to erase my marks and, well, hopefully it's going to erase my marks. Uh-huh. It's not wanting to erase my marks on this fabric. Silky fabrics, they're the only ones. Cottons, wovens, wools, things like that, they come off super, super easy. But it looks like I'm having an issue on the silky fabric, the polyester. So, you know, reminder to always check what your pens are going to do. This is on the inside, so it's not that big of a deal to me. But I will be using a different marking pen for the rest of this project. And um, so then I'm pressing it over to one side. Opening it up. Come on opening it up and I can lay that crease straight down on the middle like this and I'm going to press that down okay so I'm going to do this all the way down here so I have a nice crease I'll probably pin that up there just to keep it solid but uh, yeah I love my heat erasable pins I really really do and 90 percent of the time they do fabulous but every now and then something happens, so always test it on your fabric. Okay, so this right here is that lower dot, you can see right here. And so what I need to do is come in and stitch it from that dot over to the edge, you know, just this like fold part. You're not going through anything that's going to show on that side and then also on this side from this edge to that dot. So you're locking in your pleat, but on the outside of the fabric, it's not going to show. So I'm going to go ahead and make those two little stitches. Okay, so this is the right side of it. And if you can see, I have my stitching just going across here and oops, across here. So it doesn't actually say in the instructions, but I'm going to go ahead and open up my basting here. Um, I've already pressed it, but I want to see what it looks like with that pleat open. So I have picked out the um, basting stitches that were holding it together, and it makes a nice little pleat. 
Now up here, this is the point where I have my stitching coming across and at that point up, it's closed. But I like that, I like that. Before I sew the front to the back piece, I need to come around and serge around to everything. And I try to be very careful not to take any excess fabric off, just basically taking off any stray hairs and things like that. So let me go do that and I will be right back. Okay, so I have my back piece here and I'm going to, using my chalk pencil, mark, um, this is the circle that's going to be marking where the opening is. I've got another one here that's for um, sleeve placement. I'm not actually marking the triangle up here because that is for shoulder seam and that's where my seam allowance will be. So that one's kind of self-explanatory. And this one here, there's going to be a little elastic thread loop that's gonna go right here. And that's gonna be just underneath the edge. So that's kind of self-explanatory too. So I'm also going to clip my notches just like that and come around and serge around each individual piece. All right, so I have my individual back pieces um, serged around and I want to show you one more thing. The directions want you to ease stitch on the back edge before you sew it to the front. I see no point in that because it's the same size. This is the point where they would be sewn together. You know, there might be a quarter inch in there somewhere if you really squint and look for it, but I don't see it. So again, I am skipping that ease stitching direction right here just because I don't see a point in it. So setting this aside for a minute, what I'm gonna be doing first is sewing this center seam from this point here all the way down at 5 8 and then pressing this seam open. This is my back, all pressed open and everything, and I'm going to go putting this together a little bit different order than the instructions say, as I do. So what I need to do right now is interface my facing pieces. There's a back and a front. And since this is so lightweight, I want to make sure I'm using a lightweight interfacing. And I'm going to use this one, you know. Come on. There you go. Very, very lightweight. Very reasonably priced. Okay. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do when I'm putting on my interfacing is to iron my piece. It gets the wrinkles out plus the heat that you put and moisture that you put into it kind of makes it ready more to adhere when you put the other on. So making sure that the fusible side is down. I'm just going to place this on here. And if, see when I ironed it, it stretched it out a little bit. That's fine. Um, I, after I fuse my interfacing on here, then I'll just trim where it overshot. So that doesn't bother me. Um, my iron is a steam iron, so I am using that moisture. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to push down. I'm trying not to wiggle it around too much. It's more like pressing than ironing, just holding it down. I need to move my cloth. Okay, but I'll move my cloth over here, do that, and then after that, come over and again with the press cloth on it, because I have a little bit of stuff sticking out the sides, I will iron it again on the right side. Actually, that looks pretty darn good to me. Looks like it's adhering well. The thinner interfacing doesn't need as much time when you're pressing it, but I will go ahead and re-iron. And I'm going back and forth this time because it's been fused. At this point, I'm just heating it up again. Trying not to let it stick to my iron. I have a piece of Teflon sheeting that I use a lot of times when something is gluey. 
and I guess I could be using that. The only thing I don't like about the Teflon is that the moisture doesn't really go through it as well as it does with a piece of muslin. So anyhow, that's what I do. Um, let me get the interfacing fused to the back facing pieces and we'll go on from here. Okay, so I'm back over here with my fused pieces. Now where the fabric is a little bit longer, I'm actually just trimming that off to match up to the size of the interfacing because I feel like the uh, interfacing is more of a true size than the fabric. If it's just a little bit, honestly, you don't need to, but something like this, I do just because um, if I don't, it might throw off where my stitching line is. Now, like I said, I'm going to be doing a different order than what the instructions say, but I'll tell you why when I get there. I need to go ahead and mark this piece. So I'm going to punch that hole because I need that hole and mark that. Well, let's see if white on white shows up. It might not. Yep, it does. Okay, so this is 5 8 in, this mark here, and I need to stitch it from this point down. I need to leave this open up here. All right, so this is one of the reasons I'm doing it in different order. Under their finishing section, there's a little loop to go over a button that goes back here. And they want you to put that on the very last thing. I actually want to put it on earlier because I want to be able to bury the ends underneath my facing. And instead of just making a thread loop like they are, I'm actually going to make an elastic loop that matches and I want to show you a little trick. Okay, so this is just a way to make a thread loop a whole lot faster than doing it by hand. So I am using a little piece of my clear elastic and I'm going to fold it in half. I changed my mind. I don't feel like trying to fold this at once. And I've used it before. It's, it's fine, but I'm going to use just some of this little elastic cording stuff. Cut off a bit of that. I'm going to put it underneath my presser foot and I'm cutting it way too long but that's okay for what I need because I want to be able to hold it in the back. And I'm just going to start zigzagging. And I'm stretching it as I zigzag it. Just letting it do its thing. see if that's enough. Do a little more. Okay. So it looks like this, all right? So it kind of matches, but usually you can make it even more dense by stretching and just kind of pulling it together. See how you can just kind of work those stitches down because they're not touching, they're not stitching into the elastic, they're just kind of covering it. So there, I've moved them all together. So now I have a piece of elastic that I can pull. I can sew like this and it pretty well matches my garment. So this is what I'm going to go sew onto my blouse top. Alrighty, so this is the side that I want my loop to be on. So I want it to look like this. Alright, what I'm going to do, because I'm sewing my facing on at this point, and yes, this is not the order on the instructions, but it will be fine. I am going to put my loop. So here I've marked it on my interfacing, okay? So this is 5 8 down from the top. That is 5 8 in from the side, all right? So when I sew this on, that's going to be my point right here, all right? And I want my loop to stick out that way. So I actually need to place it like this, all right? So what I'm going to do is actually put a little piece of tape on there before I stitch it. I think that's going to help me. Let me go get some tape. Okay, so this is just going to help me while I'm stitching it. I can pull this scotch tape off as soon as I'm done. All right, 
So I'm having that taped on there and I'm going to come back and I'm going to sew it with my sewing machine over here. All right, so hang on, let me cut this thread off here. So this, something to point with, this mark here is my stitching line. That's 5 eighths. I actually stitched this down here about an eighth of an inch in, closer to like a half inch seam allowance, okay? So I'm going to pull my scotch tape off now because she has done what she needs to do. And now I can come in here and trim off these little legs. Okay, so I still have those in there. And now when I go to sew my facing on, it's going to be fine. Now I'm going to give it a little tug. Oops. Okay. I can tell when I gave it a little tug that my sewing machine stitches did not actually catch the cording. So I'm just going to come with a hand needle and just take a couple little stitches just to make sure it goes straight through the middle of that. The odds are when I sew this other seam, it's going to catch it, but just to make sure, I'm going to do that really quick. All right, so I'm just going to sew the facing on here one side at a time. So I'm just folding one side down out of my way and this piece of this facing down out of my way and pinning it so that um, I have very clear access to the sides. So what I'm going to do is come around up here, Maybe down. come around up here at 5 eighths all the way at this corner, pivot, come down. I might go over these little um, bands one more time just to make sure I catch them. I did uh, grab them with my needle and thread straight through so it should be fine. And then I'm going to take it down here. And I have a pin where I need to stop and you know I can see where my stitching is on my facing. Then once I have that done, I'm going to flip it and do the whole thing again on this side. All right, so I have these both sewn. While I was over there, I went ahead and surged around the bottom of this facing. It actually would have been easier to serge the bottom of it before I sewed it. So you do that, but you know, we could still make it work. I'm just clipping some of the bulk out here and putting some clips there because this is a very lightweight fabric and a very lightweight um, interfacing. So I'm not really worried about the bulk on this one. I'm pressing out the corners here so we can see what that's going to look like. So this is the side that's going to have the button on it. I can pull my little thread loop. And let's see if I can poke that out a little more just above it. There you go. All right. So there's my little loop. Shifting on the fly, I'm actually going to trim it down some. I think that that will give me the look that I need a little bit better than those notches. I don't know if you can tell when I opened it, it, it didn't seem like it was laying as smoothly as I wanted it to. So let's try this one now. Oh yeah, I think that that's going to lay nicer. All right, sometimes you just have to go through the process of trying things. Living my bucolic life, free of me city strife. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sew and spin, and put the horses in to the barn, and time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light pleases me, as it is plain to see. I'm living my bucolic life.